Inward Experience by J.W. Accent. Hello, my name is Jeffrey, and if you know what's good for you, you'll keep listening. It all happened in my hometown of Greenwich, North Dakota. I've never really been the religious type, but my friend Mike wouldn't shut up about being saved. He was always quoting scripture or talking about one tradition or another. Mike was just so enthralled about the concept of a life beyond, another world of gold or some such nonsense. Well, I've pretty much changed my mind after what I've experienced. I've seen way more than just some ritual to make me sick, an outward expression of an inward experience, some would say. It's way more than that, the believers would say, but I say it's sick. The very spirit of pure evil, twisted and blind as they are, oh, why could they not see it? Here's how it all went down. Mike had invited me to his baptism, thinking it would change him more than he already had been. I told him, snickering slightly, My friend, the only change that's going to happen to you is you coming up wet. I continued heckling as we were getting close to the destination. Oh yeah, he dipped all right, making you the dip. Mike had seemed a little different the past few days, as if he had been prepared for what laid ahead. Mike placed his hand on my shoulder. It felt like a ton of bricks and shocked me with a horrifying jolt that sent my body into a spiral of pain. He let go and... And I was all right. The pain was gone. But the pain was replaced with a sense of something inside me. I don't know if it was just a feeling or... But it wasn't good. Oh, you'll feel the power before you know it, Jeffrey. Mike spoke in a voice that seemed not his own. Mike pulled into a clearing next to a few other vehicles. It was very peaceful here. The tops of the trees covered the sun, giving the surrounding area a nice, cool shade. As we got out of the car and shut our doors, the scent of pine and nature tantalized my nostrils. Nearby was a beautiful lake. All seemed peaceful, except the sounds of the forest. Nothing. No birds. No breeze whistling in my ears. All was silent as the grave eerie. A very tall man stood near the lake, and I found it odd that he was wearing a suit. It was too warm for that. Some foliage from a nearby tree hit his face. Well, from where I stood, I couldn't see his face. That's our pastor, Father Sam Nelder, Mike said. I reached into my pocket and pulled out my cell phone. I just wanted to allow my mother the knowledge of where I was. Even though I was an adult, she would smother me at times. And the phone, it had no signal. That couldn't be. I had a satellite phone. I quickly pocketed the cell. I had this creeping feeling about the pastor. The more I looked at him, the more I just didn't want Mike to enter the water. Call me crazy, but I felt so unsure about the whole situation. Mike... He started to walk over to him. I grabbed his arm. He pulled away. All will be fine. What he had just told me. No. I knew it was wrong. I could hear it, hidden deep within the reaches of that voice. A voice I now truly pick up on is not being Mike's. I reiterate, this was no longer my dear friend Mike, but a shell. No more like a zombie of a husk who once was a man. The others, the others here, they too seemed robotic, all carbon copies of one another. Mike turned to me. Come, meet our pastor. I don't want to. I wanted to yell, but I felt that would be rude. Then I saw the minister's face, and he had no, he had no expression of he seemed to have no, no ill will. He had the kindest blue eyes I had ever seen. 
the sweetest smile of a kind old man who... It was a complete lie. I could see it past his face. He was twitching for some odd reason. He reached out to presumably shake my hand. Well, I didn't want to be rude, so I extended my hand and grabbed his, shaking it only to feel the most... the most calm I had ever been. I felt overwhelmed with glee, and I, and I let go. I didn't like the feeling. Well, I did like the feeling. But it seemed a bit unnerving and pushed. I'm Father Sam Nelder. Please, call me Sam. His voice was that of a kindly old man. Trust me when I say that I, I could read in him something else. And I felt a sudden personal dread just being near him. Hesitantly, I replied, saying my name. Oh, Jeffrey, Mike has said so much. Welcome to our little community. He placed an arm on my shoulder and led me uncomfortably toward a crowd. This just wasn't right. They all smiled at me, giving me a plastic sort of store mannequin stare, as if nothing was beyond what I truly was looking at that those same feelings were being forced into me with that handshake or that touch. The grabbing of my shoulder in Mike's car. Almost like a spreading of a parasite. A symbiote. I puked, but held my mouth shut, allowing the burning bile to slither down my throat. It made me sick to think, just to think, that something was alive fighting for control of my body. A whisper, very slight, entered my ears, but but no one was even near me. I listened intently to the voice. No. Voices getting louder, louder, subtly gaining resonance within my ears. Wait. No. In my mind. It wasn't unpleasant, just unnerving, realizing that the song was coming from the surrounding community. They were all staring at me. I could hear the words, and, and he dipped, just repeating in my head. I thought it would never end. It seemed like an hour or so until they finally ended the song with, And he came out clean. They were singing the very song that I had teased Mike with on the way here. They knew. Did Mike tell them? But no, I knew he didn't. They knew. They just stood, looking at me. Mike walked slowly toward me, making me feel that much more uneasy. Finally, he stopped, made eye contact, and he, he spoke. Let's go down to the river. I don't know what compelled me to do so, but I followed. What happened next was somewhat a blur, but I will explain to the best of my abilities while I am still... while I am still me, before they take over and I become one in their hive. No, I fought the urge to follow, and I ran. The cars, they were gone, but now what? Nearby was a bush. I kept on running. I, I looked behind it and peered through. I had lost them when Mike called out. I could hear screeching in my head and whispers calling out to me, Come to us. Come to us. I ignored the voices the best I could. They finally moved on with their little arrangements, leading Mike to the waters. Sam, that thing called out something, a name, I can't really say it, let alone spell the word. Know this, it was a name. The reverend pulled a book out from his suit jacket and began to read a passage, but it sounded wrong. It felt wrong somehow. John 3, verse 22. After the things came, the Lord and his disciples traveled to Judea. And there they baptized. 
Now again, I am not religious. However, I know the Bible, and that was not exactly what the passage reads. What things was he talking about? In the... Oh my God. Then it hit me. The parasite was passed through touch, but it must be strengthened by the... Mike! I couldn't help it. I ran as fast as I could to my friend, wading into the water. But before I could do anything, Mike... Mike grabbed me by the nape of the neck. I've already had my inward experience, Jeffrey. It's your turn now, my friend. He forced my head into the water. I couldn't hear him very well. Water in my ears muffled the noise above. I could read his lips, too. He was saying... I couldn't believe what he was saying. Mike said... We have all gathered here to witness the baptism of our brother Jeffrey. I saw things. Things just passing over my face and it felt... Nothing yet. Everything. No pain. No panic. But I still wanted out. I thrashed and splashed, scratching my friend's arm up, but to no avail. And I finally gave in. My arms went limp. My vision turned to darkness for a moment, and then I felt it. Harmony. Mike pulled me up from the watery grave. Jeffrey was dead. I had come out clean. So if you come across a newspaper talking about missing people, we're not lost, but found a home. Our new little home. Our little community. Our little church in the wild wood. Oh, won't you join us so that you too can have an inward experience? Become one of us. Number two, submit. <laughs>